Hey guys, so I've been pondering something. God loves you, right? This is what everybody says. Um, it's amazing to me that people don't think of the instances in the Bible where did God did not love people. Um, so many times, this is why I say we need to be serious about this. This isn't a game. This isn't, you know, we need to be really serious about what we believe. <clears throat> so I'm going to give you a couple instances in the Bible where God uh, did not show mercy or love at all. I mean, except for select people that believed him. When they believed him, you know, they, they received that, that mercy. <clears throat> but if you didn't believe him, there was no second chance. You got one chance. So let's talk about Noah. Noah was told by God to build a boat. And, you know, that's it. He did it. He believed him, had faith completely, even tried to warn others of what was coming. People didn't listen to him. So when the flood finally came, God destroyed the entire world besides eight people. Eight people were spared. That was it. So I, I don't know why people have this mindset that, oh, well, God is love, so, you know, don't worry. P people aren't, people aren't going to burn in hell for all eternity. Uh, people aren't going to suffer, you know what I'm saying? That's just an example of God destroying the entire world. Everybody. And only eight people survived. He, he, he's going to do it again, too. I'm not talking about flood the world, but as far as the destruction of the world, that, that's going to happen. <clears throat> and I'll go into more detail with that in later videos. So that's, that's one example. Okay, and now let's go to uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, Abraham asked God, you know, over and over, certain numbers of people. He's like, you know... What if there's 50 righteous men in that city? And God told him, I'll spare the entire city if I find 50 righteous men. He's like, what if I find, you know, like 20? He said, he, he will spare the entire city. He's like, what if I find 10? He'll spare the entire city if he finds 10 righteous men. He's like, what if there's just one? God said, I'll find, I will spare the entire city if I find one righteous man. Now, we end up we know the the you know what happens in the story lots family gets saved um but god destroys the entire city now that that was it <laughs> he destroyed the entire city he had no problem doing that um <clears throat> that, that was that was it so i mean it's just an example of god destroying people not loving them at all you you don't love somebody that you're destroying that you're killing um and that was it they're all in hell to this day people that died in the flood all in hell to this day but people want to say oh god loves those people i'm gonna tell you the instance where god did love every single person on the planet god loved everybody when he died on the cross for you that's it God loved everybody. And the Father in heaven reconciled the entire world to himself through what Jesus Christ did, through his sacrifice, his, his atonement. He was able to reconcile the whole world and not impute sin. Since that time period, sins have not been imputed to us, hasn't, hasn't been transferred to our account. The account is cleared. It's, it's zero now in the account. But you can't go to heaven with a zero. You need Jesus Christ's righteousness imputed onto you, which you you get when you believe the gospel, and you be and you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the um, the earnest of the inheritance. So there's so many examples in the Bible where God did not love people. I'm just going to be honest with you. I mean, that's just that's just reality. We can keep saying this. We can keep, you know, hearing preachers say that. And you can keep believing that God is going to somehow spare the entire world. And I've given you examples where he didn't. 
He destroyed entire cities, destroyed the entire world. And only a remnant every single time were saved. A remnant, a very small amount. So, uh, and a lot of people say, oh, well, you shouldn't be, uh, you know, you're, you're putting fear in people. You're, you're putting fear. Fear is, fear is, is the wrong thing. Fear, yes, we, we should not have a spirit of fear. But if you're in the wrong, uh, if, if you're teaching wrong gospel or believing a wrong gospel, you should be afraid. You're not saved. You've been hearing a lie your whole life. You haven't even heard the true gospel. True gospel is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the true gospel. You can look that up. But, I mean, that's what I want. I want you to doubt. Whether or not you're saved, what you believe, that's exactly what I want. Um, and it's fine. I don't care if people, you know, call me names or whatever. I, I, I'm doing this to help you so you can understand and make sure you're saved. Know you're saved fully. That's it. I know I'm saved fully. I believe what I'm supposed to believe. That's it. Jesus Christ is, is, is my salvation. That's it. I believe in the book. I believe in this book right here. That this is God's words to us. It's inspired by God. And I believe his promises in that book. That's it. I'm sealed with the Holy Spirit. And I have Jesus Christ imputed righteousness. Do you know? Are you believing that message? So that that's really why I'm doing this message. Because uh, a lot of people, it's like somehow, like if you just tell somebody Jesus loves you. But that's, that's great. That's nice. I'm glad Jesus Christ loved the whole world. D does that get you saved by telling that person? If they just believe Jesus Christ loves me, are they saved? No, they're not. They're not saved at all. There's some knowledge you need to know. And that knowledge you need to trust in, have faith in, for salvation. And it needs to be the correct knowledge. So, um... That's, that's what I wanted to. I mean, if you go to Romans chapter 3, verse 5, that talks about how we're enemies of God. We're, we're enemies of God currently right now if we're unrighteous. You know, that's... I mean, there's other verses that say God's wrath is on the unrighteous. So, if you're unrighteous right now, if you don't have Jesus Christ's righteousness... You are what the verse is talking about. You're unrighteous. And God's wrath is residing on you. He's not angry about sin. That's not what he's angry about. That happens every video. <laughs> he's not angry about sin anymore. It's not, it's not angry about that anymore. Now... His wrath is on you simply for being unrighteous. Because he's already made a way for you to get righteousness. He's already made created a way. But if you are still, which primary, primary most of the world is, unrighteous, God's wrath is on you. Meaning he's angry. And, you know, you're going to hell. Not for sin. But because you don't believe in the gospel. Because when you believe in the gospel, you get Jesus Christ imputed righteousness. You become sealed with the Holy Spirit. So the source of your salvation is believing the gospel. The good news of what Jesus Christ did for you on that cross. Um, it's, it's amazing how no one preaches about this in churches. No one talks about this. You know... I, I really, I'm at a loss for words when it comes to people trying to preach in the church and, and no one is talking about this message at all. Mostly I think it's because people are motivated for money. Preachers want money. They want you to tithe. I'll do a video later on explaining to you why we shouldn't tithe as well. That's not for us today either. But preachers want to insist on you that you should tithe. So, it's, it's truly just amazing how we're, we're being deceived every single day. I used to be. I'm not deceived anymore. 
And I don't want you to be deceived anymore. Whoever's watching this video, you should know the truth. You should know that God is very capable and will destroy the entire world one day. It's going to happen again. Um, and no, God is not loving these people. I hate to destroy them. Some people have a sick mind. They really do. They, they're like, oh, God loves you even though he's killing you or, you know, sending you to hell. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. You're, that's it. You're done. Once, when you're dead, when you're in hell, you're gone. You're not even remembered anymore by God. It's pretty horrible. He doesn't remember you anymore. You're gone forever. It's like you don't even exist. You do exist. You, I'm not preaching annihilation or anything. You are literally alive being tortured in a lake of fire. But the point is God, the creator, no longer remembers you. That's pretty scary. He doesn't remember you. It's like you don't exist, basically. Your family, friends, everybody you know, that's it. It's all gone. You'll never see them again. Or you will see them again, and you'll be burning with them in all eternity. That might be the only comfort. is you're, I guess you're burning with people, but I, it's just a horrible idea. It's no comfort in hell. I mean, once you, when, you, when you're there, it, that's it. You have one chance. This is your chance. This life is your chance. And so many people are squandering it. So many people are just like, they don't care. Oh, I'll get saved one day. I, I'm just relaxed, and I'm just chilling right now. You know, I ain't got no worries. But you never know when you're going to take your last breath. You never know when it's all over. So, I mean, everyone should really check themselves and see, are they saved? The Bible and other verses talks about prove, prove all things. You can prove all things with this Bible. Everything. Because the information is in there. You just got to search for it. Um, I also had another topic. I'm trying to remember it. <laughs> What I want to talk about. Okay. Uh, revelations. Um, I don't really talk that much about this because I'm not going to be here. I believe in, you know, the church, uh, the, the body of Christ. If you're in the body of Christ, I believe you'll be caught away to meet Jesus Christ in the air. I don't believe, I don't believe you'll be going through that. But um, I can touch on that a little bit. In Revelations... You know, there's this verse is in there. You have to search it for yourself. I'm really paraphrasing, and I'll be honest, I don't know the chapter and verse. I've just seen it, but at this time, no, I can't do like I've done in other videos and just go straight from the Bible with this. Um, I've seen that God's wrath will be poured out on the entire earth. You know, another example of God, His wrath is on people. Now it's just being seen the only difference in revelations is you're seeing god's wrath in the form of plagues you know and a lot of people think revelations is very symbolic um i don't know i don't know about that i mean there's locusts in there they're supposed to have hair like women and be the size of horses have teeth like i think lions or something like you know you could say it's very symbolic but that's a pretty horrifying sight if there is really a locust like that you know I mean why would you want to be here to experience that oh man it, you know it's too late a person is just like I can't believe this is all real this is really happening right now this locust chasing me around stinging me you know like you don't want to be here when that happens and then you got to mark the, the antichrist running around cutting off Christians heads well saints heads you don't take the mark of the beast he's going to cut your head off you know so you either take the mark of the beast or you die for Jesus Christ. That's it. I mean, who would want to go through this? I don't want to go through this. Some people have even called, oh, well, that's just being a coward. That's fine. I don't want to go through it. I don't want to go to hell. So I'll believe the gospel. I have no problem doing that. I have no problem believing all my sins have been forgiven. Check. Easy. So I'm not going to be here during the revelations. I'm either going to you know, die, you know, that, that sometime before that ever happened, you know, this event could be hundreds of years in the future. We still don't know when the, the rapture is going to happen, you know. I'll be dead long before that or rapture could happen today as I make this video. 
and I'll be gone. And this will be the last thing. You know, we have no idea the rapture is imminent. It can happen at any point, any time. And again, why would you want to be here left on earth? Like, man, that was my one ticket out. Well, now I got to go through, go through all this. You know, I got to survive all this. Like, I just don't think people take God serious. They don't take the Bible serious. They're not, they're not thinking at all. They still don't really believe it. They, they really don't. And I get it. I understand. But, I mean, that's where it's a separation between do you want to live or do you want to die? I want to live. So I, I choose to put my faith in that Bible. I choose to put my faith that Jesus Christ has already forgiven me of all sins. You know, he's buried, rose again to justify me. All he wants to do is for me to believe a message, some knowledge. Come on, that's that's really easy. He's not asking for me to turn away from your sins and stop sinning forever. You know, resist sin like so many preachers would tell you in churches. I mean, God is not, he doesn't like sin, of course. But the point is, how can I turn away from something that was already forgiven? How can I stop doing something that was already forgiven? What sin is there to turn away from? That's, that's what I'm saying. No, nothing. Your flesh has a sinful nature and it will sin until you die. Your flesh is not, your, your body has not been redeemed. It hasn't been redeemed until, you know, that, that happens in Revelation. It talks about, you know, people being, um, another word, you, you could say uh, transferred or uh, just changed to a glorified body. Other people that have been dead, they'll come back to earth and get their body. And, and that's it. You know what I'm saying? I, again, Revelation is something I'm still studying. I'm not going to be here for it, so I guess I, that's why I really don't put that much you know time into it but I do want to put I, I do want to learn it more I, I want to get I want to understand everything in the Bible that's my, my goal understand everything but I focus very heavily on the God because that's what saves me my knowledge of revelations doesn't save me it's only the knowledge of the gospel trusting that having faith in that so I just made this video so people can understand uh, you know God's love and um Really, God loved the entire world at one point. But uh, right now, no. Right now, his wrath is on the unrighteous. And if you're unrighteous, no, God doesn't love you. That's not when you become, uh, when you get Jesus Christ, yeah, you're in family now. You know what I'm saying? That's You're good to go. God does love you. And then I believe personally that uh, God chastises all, you know, people that are in the family. Um, so, I mean... That's another thing. You can look around at some people's lives and you see how their lives are going. And that can kind of show you, you know, what's going on. But, um, I mean, sin in itself is a built-in consequence system. So, either way, sin itself brings destruction. Whether you're righteous and saved or unrighteous. You know, a righteous saved person goes out to sin. Uh, well, terrible things happen to them. But God specifically chastising you um no but because of the built-in consequence of sin yes you, you you'll be chastised yes you'll be you know you'll have horrible things happen to you in this world um paul talks about in one of his verses i mean in in his epistles uh he talks about deliver somebody to Satan for the destruction of their body. And um, right there, I mean, you could almost look at that. that that's it. I mean, Paul is acknowledging, you know, Satan is sinful. So, you know, this guy right here wants to live in sin. All right, give him to Satan. You know, does that mean Satan's going to come out and just kill this guy? No, I think he's just saying, like, for the destruction of the flesh. The flesh will be destroyed. Um, so... But, I mean, really, that's going to happen to everybody. But me as well. If I go out and live a sinful life, my flesh is still has a sinful nature. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to reap what I sow. That's just the way it is. But it still doesn't change the fact that my sins, these sins that I'm doing today, have been forgiven. They've, they've already been forgiven. I'm, you know, 
I mean, really, it's not me that do it. That's the whole point. And it's not, this doesn't apply to an, a believer. This applies to even an unrighteous person. What Jesus Christ did on the cross, you were quickened together with him. You were raised from death to life. There's a new creature in you, everybody, the entire world, new spirit, new creature. But a person with this, you know, this new creature in them, that, that person that's been resurrected, if they're not sealed with the Holy Spirit, if they don't have Jesus Christ's righteousness, they're still not going to heaven. So everybody on earth that's sinning right now, you're sinning because of your sinful flesh nature. But the real you, the real Brandon Trey Mevin that's in me right now, he has never sinned. Hitler, everyone talk about, you know, Hitler, right? Or, um, you know, all these, these murderers, these horrible people. These people, sinful nature. That's, that's it. Sinful nature. Your flesh can do some horrible, wicked things. Things that you're not even imagining, you can't even imagine. You can do some terrible things. But these people's spirits have never known sin. We, we were born, I mean, think about it, we are born 2,000 years after Jesus Christ. Our spirit has never sinned. Not even one time. But your flesh has. Because it has a sinful nature. But again, you need the sealing of the Holy Spirit. God himself, Holy Spirit is God, it's not a it, it's a he. He, you need him dwelling within you, you need him to seal you with the earnest of the inheritance. And then you need Jesus Christ's righteousness. These are the things you need to go to heaven, eternal life. So I just wanted to make this video and I hope this, you know, reaches people and it helps you to understand more. Um, and this was really, I know I didn't really go take out my Bible and, and go verse by verse like I did uh, earlier today. This is me more just kind of talking about it and trying to relate, get you to see it from the Bible viewpoint, from God's viewpoint, so you can understand to stop listening to these preachers that are, are in error. That's all it is. Some of them are just trying to beguile you, like Satan. You know, literally, on purpose. They just want money. That's all they care about. Or they want to just, you know, control people. Some people are just control freaks. And, you know, that's just what they want. I don't want no followers. I don't want none of that. I want no money. I'm just giving you, trying to help you out. That's all. And God has made salvation so easy. It's as easy as, like, just, just drinking water. It's, it's easy. Believe the gospel. I mean, what is hard about that? You can believe something, right? You believe every day, I'm going to get my check on the first. Or, you know, you, you believe, um, yeah, I'll, I'll be able to make it to work on time. How do you know? How do you know you're going to get your check on the first? How do you know you're going to make it to work on time? You're putting faith into these things. You have no idea. You can't see it. You can see when your check comes, but as you're saying it, as you're sitting there believing your check is going to come on the first, you have no idea. As you're sitting there believing you're going to make it to work, you have no idea if you're going to make it to work. Faith, substance of things hoped for, evidence not seen. Faith in the gospel. Faith in what Jesus Christ did. Not of your works. No works. Not of works lest any man should boast. If you could work, you could boast about it. You get it? If I could say, oh, look at all the homeless people I saved today. Then I could boast to God that, God, you have to let me in. I'm a righteous man. I save homeless people. You see what I'm saying? No, it doesn't work like that. Now, in time past, I mean, you did have to do works. And, you know, that was, there's a section of the, um, of the church right now. Some people are believing, you know, it, it's been by faith the entire time. And, no, I don't believe that. In the future... You just believing God is, is not going to save you. You're going to have to do some things. If, unfortunately, if you're here when revelations, everything happens, you're going to have to not take the mark of the beast. You're going to have to not deny Jesus Christ. You're going to have to go back to doing commandments. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's what you're going to have to do. Do I think it's the same commandments? No, I think there'll be new commandments that God wants. But you're going to have to have faith and do something today we do nothing today we just believe that's it so um that's it um next video um 
you know, I'll, I'll try to uh, discuss more about prophets. You know, uh, a lot of these churches that claim they have a prophet or, you know, examples would be Seventh-day Adventists, Mormons. I'll talk more about that in um, upcoming videos. I'll, I'll talk about why you should work. It's still a, it's still a good thing to work. I, it's, it's a choice. It's not a, oh, I'm Br Brandon is claiming we're saved by works. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you should, though. You, you, you should try to go out and do some work for God. You should. But if you choose not to, you're going to heaven no matter. I can choose right now. Nope, not working for God. Not going to do it. But I want to explain how your works, I mean, one, of course, they benefit you when you get to heaven. You'll get rewards. But they benefit others. Yeah, I mean, what I'm doing right now, I'm, I'm, I'm ministering to people, explaining them the truth. This is, this is benefiting you. You're, you're gaining knowledge. I benefited when I learned the truth. Someone explained it to me. So, I mean, it's very important that we go out here and, you know, I, I say more importantly, do works that serve God. Not works that serve ourselves. Works that go out and show people the gospel. Show them how to get saved. You know. That's 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 what's more important. You know what I'm saying? Again, and those works that you do are for rewards in heaven. That nothing else more. But I, I I'm so happy when I'm able to explain the gospel to somebody and they believe it and they get saved. I, I'm just glad I saved another person. Not even really me. I just Jesus Christ did. But I was able to communicate the message to them on what to do. And I saved them from burning in hell. If you don't know that message, that's where you're going. And you might say, oh, well, you can't judge me. Only God can judge me. Yeah, he is going to judge you. He's going to judge everybody one day. I'm going to be judged based on rewards. If you're not believing that, you know, the 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, you're going to be judged based on works. Still not condemning you of sin. But now, okay, let's see what your works were. And if you have, if you, you know... Have one evil work, you're done. Because you don't have, you haven't been sealed by the Holy Spirit. You don't have Jesus Christ's perfect righteousness. He did the work for me. I'm saying Jesus Christ worked for me. He worked for the entire world, but I'm claiming it. I'm believing it. I'm trusting he did those works for me, the entire world, everybody. People that are saying, no, I trust myself. Okay, take what you've done uh, standing before God as he judges you are you really confident standing in front of God that you'll be fine God I, I've never done anything wrong I've never sinned and I've saved a hundred homeless people and you know I, I went out here and drove demons out of people you, are you ready you, you, re you sure God's not going to say you did not one thing that was wrong nothing right see what I'm getting at the only one that ever obtained perfection was Jesus Christ. He was God. God in the flesh. He obtained perfect perfection. Righteousness. Never sinned once. I want that. I have that. You should want that as well. Don't trust yourself. <laughs> Why would you trust yourself? So, um, till next time. Alright guys. God bless.